Let's talk about another device <coughs> that affects polarization, the phase retarder. So this device alters polarization alters the polarization state through birefringence. And again, just like dichroism, that's just a word. Let's go ahead and define it. Birefringence basically means the, um, the light's phase velocity depends on polarization. So the phase velocity, remember when you go into a material, you take the speed of light and you divide it by the real part of the index of refraction. So what we're talking about, if you want to think in terms of anisotropy, it's anisotropy in the real part, in R. So dichroism was anisotropy in the imaginary part, the absorption. This is anisotropy in the real part. So let's look at what that would do to light. Um, here we have an optical axis. And let's imagine we have some birefringent material right here. And let's have light, a plane wave of light, approach that material. And now if I look at it this way, you can see that the up and down arrows are the vertical polarization and the in and out of the board arrows are the horizontal polarization. And the way I'm drawing it now, they're equal and in phase. So you imagine I'm drawing the arrow when the amplitude is a maximum. Okay, so they're equal and in phase, so the real polarization is linear at 45 degrees, if we wanted to, to really mathematically describe it. But when they hit this material, they're going to slow down and they're going to go different speeds because it's birefringent. So in this case, I have the horizontal um, going a little faster and the vertical lagging it a little bit. And if that happens, when they come out, they'll be the same speed again. And now you can see what we do, we've done is we've introduced a phase shift. Now the way I've drawn it, there's a phase shift of uh, pi over 2. So we've gone from linearly polarized light to circularly polarized light. Now, birefringence doesn't always <coughs> give you a pi over 2 phase shift. You can think about what does the phase shift depend on. Well, it would depend on how thick this material is. It depends on this physical distance. It would depend on the difference between the two indices, the difference in their speeds, or the difference between the two real parts of the index. And it would depend on the wavelength, how many cycles they go through to get there. So you can actually have linear light go in, and all kinds of different phase shifts can form. It depends on the properties of this thing we call a phase retarder. So let's look at a formula for uh, light. And in general, then, we would say if we put linear light in, we would have some form of elliptical come out, keeping in mind that elliptical could be linear, really like an elliptical circular. This is just sort of a general word. So if you introduce some random phase shift, you could get pretty much anything. OK, so let's see what it will look like then. The phase shift you would get between the horizontal and the vertical, let's think about it for a minute. These things are going through their little cycles. And it's going to depend on how, many, uh, on how much difference they build up each cycle. Right? So it's going to kind of depend on that k vector. Or we could think of it as how many um, cycles do they go through. The d, the distance, the thickness, of the thing divided by a lambda naught. That would be the fractions of a cycle, but you need the 2 pi there, right? d and 2 pi. If this is fractions of a cycle, this puts it in radians times 2 pi. Or you can think of this as just k. 2 pi over lambda naught is, is the vacuum wave number. So d is just how many cycles does it go through. And how many cycles, and then it's not just how many cycles it goes through, it's how much difference does it build up. So you could put the index of the vertical minus the index of the horizontal light, the two indices. So you could say that's going to give you the phase difference. It's a little ambiguous, though, because I said delta phi, the phase difference. I didn't say if it was vertical minus horizontal or horizontal minus vertical. I didn't say which way it goes. So often when you see it written like this in a book, they'll put error, uh, error bars. They'll put an absolute value bar there. That way, it doesn't really matter which way you subtract them, and it doesn't really matter which way you're defining delta phi. It's kind of arbitrary. It actually doesn't matter. 
Okay? But if you wanted to get real specific, then we could write it more specifically. You could say, um, I want to write it this way, E H minus E V, and say these are the individual phase shifts each one gets. Okay? So this one, this is now the phase shift it builds up compared to what it would have done had it just gone through vacuum. And this one is the phase shift it would, this one would have done had it just gone through vacuum. And you subtract those, and those are a more specific form of the phase shift. And then that would just be how much phase did they build up the whole time? 2 pi d over lambda naught. And this one, um, it's going to be in h up here. All right, in h. And then this one minus 2 pi d over lambda naught um, in v. So you can see it's, it's basically the same. But this is being more specific about the exact phase differences. And if you're wondering why did the n go in the top, remember that, you, um, th that the wavelength essentially decreases. So instead of lambda naught, the vacuum wavelength, it's lambda naught over n, lambda naught over n. So that's how you get those two numbers. And then next, we'll look at how you put it into a, into a Jones matrix.